Hello everyone and welcome to Gear Time and of course Nick Hadett in the room with us who is the camera expert in, in my view and I always appreciate it when you educate me on all of the stuff we have here in the camera room here in Fairland, Ohio and the GH5 is an incredible camera. It is, yeah. Uh, uh, for the money, for the, the features, for the, the 4K and all of the, and every aspiring filmmaker at every college we work with has several of them already. Yeah, and actually I would say probably for me the biggest benefit to it is the size. It's it's a camera on a stick. Yeah. It's... And we're not going to talk about the June cranes today, yeah. but we're for demonstration we have them and they I have never seen anyone use a Panasonic GH5 on a tripod. Does this actually happen? It does. Yeah, a lot. And they shoot really great picture. I think for what we are doing most of the time that this is not the camera I would choose for tripod use. We have a whole collection of Canon cameras that are great for that. Sure. Uh, but they're certainly capable. And so there's also a handle that allows you to do XLR audio. I would, I've never seen that. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a handle. You should definitely not pick up the camera by it. But okay. it does slip into the shoe mount. I think because of the Canon handle with XLR, yeah. I think of, I, I don't know what that attachment is, but I know there's some, I should call it an attachment. Yeah, it's an XLR adapter and it goes an into the shoe slots in here and then you can hook in XLRs and gives you full audio controls. Do uh, you think people are using that and what circumstances are they using that? Uh, people that don't want to have a portable audio recorder. Yeah, if you don't want to have to sync up your system or your audio um, in post, you'd certainly be nice to have that right on the top of the camera. It simplifies your editing a little bit. Sure. Uh, where are the places you wouldn't use this? In other words, I think that when I see it being used, it's doing the B-roll or the cutaway yeah. shots or all this handheld sort of really cinematic looking. Mm -hmm. It seems like we're always shooting with it in 4K, 60 frames per second. Where wouldn't you use it or what, what is the right use in a situation where you have other primary cameras? Yeah, so we have two GH5s here and there is also a GH5S, which is a little bit different. But with the GH5s, they're not great in low light. So. Yeah. If you start pushing them over a thousand ISO, you get into 1600, that image really starts falling apart. Hmm. Where with the Canons we have, you can push those to 3200, 4000, and still get a pretty solid image out of them. So um, for B-roll, where we either can't or don't have time to bring in extra lighting, this is maybe not the best option. We want to light those scenes a little bit. Um, and I think they're great for the gimbal. So that's primarily where we use them. If I'm shooting handheld, I'm, again, generally going to prefer using a Canon, although that's largely personal preference. Sure. And yesterday, I have to tell you this story, I was talking to a professional who has been in the business for decades, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of them, and I have nothing but respect. I always call on them when I have a question. Yeah. I can, they're my lifeline, and yeah. many of them are retired, but very uh, enthusiastic still about the yeah, business. Absolutely. And some of them teaching at Kent State or the University of Akron or other area colleges. And I spoke to... Uh, Mike Pritt yesterday, and he said that when he's teaching lighting in a college class, that there are some students who are not interested in learning all the lighting techniques because they own a GH5. And his comment was, the students have these GH5s, and the trend is, and maybe it's not just students, maybe it's professionals. So help me understand what's the appropriate attitude you should have about a lot of extra lighting equipment when you, you, do, you don't need it if you're shooting B-roll outdoors, fine. Yeah. If you're shooting in a scenario where you're just moving around a warehouse, fine. Yeah. But how does, how do, what's going to happen with a generation that goes through film school and they shoot on these and they produce b beautiful video with sort of this attitude about lighting? Yeah, so um, I guess my thought is that we, you hear a lot about making images look cinematic. Yes. And a lot of people think that that necessarily, or that means like blurring the background. So shooting with a... Shallow depth of field and yeah, all that. Yeah, you right. can get a prime lens and you watch Hollywood movies. That's, they're, you don't have these images where the background's completely blown out. So when you think of cinematic, I think of Hollywood. And so I don't necessarily think those two things are related. Um, so when I think of cinematic, I think of something that's well lit. Mm -hmm. And maybe not well lit in the sense of how you would do a corporate stand-up or a fashion shoot, but again, something more Hollywoody, which is going to look well lit, but like not that it's lit by lights. Maybe more naturalistic lighting, if you will. So I think that's maybe where the trend is going. Not not lighting, but less like three point uh, perfect ratio of lighting. Um, and I don't know exactly what college kids are doing. It's been a while <laughs> since I've been in college. Yes. Uh, but I think that's where the trend is going. 
And I hope to see that continue because I think it's a nice look. This camera, you've said it, the photography capabilities aren't quite as strong as maybe a, a Canon uh, 5D Mark II, three or four. Mm. Um, but maybe those cameras, their video capability aren't as strong as this. Is yeah. that How does that compare? And then uh, the next question I would have is shooting in 1080 on this. You were saying, I remember at one point, that maybe 1080 is not the strongest setting or not the right use for this. Yeah. So um, in terms of photography, this has a significantly smaller sensor than a GH or than a 5D. Mm -hmm. So this has a micro four third sensor. Um, so it's a two times crop, which means that the size of the sensor is about a quarter of the size of what you'd find in a 5D. So oh, wow. okay. um, it's not going to have, again, as good as low light or as good a signal to noise ratio. So you're not going to get quite as clean of images, especially if you're pushing your ISL. Um, again, the big advantage to that is the size of the camera. And the size of the camera isn't drastically smaller than a 5D. It is smaller, but right. the size of the lenses. This is equivalent to a 24 to 70. So that's where it loses a lot of weight. Yeah, is the lenses are significantly smaller. This lens, I feel like, is a quarter of the size of a 24 to It 70. makes these Jun cranes work a little better. Exactly. Or it makes it easier to balance, yeah. perhaps. So um, the 5Ds aren't bad at video inherently because of their sensor size. They're just not great at video because Canon hasn't put the resources into them to make good video because they don't want to pull away from their cinema line of cameras. And they're designing the, the 5D for photographers. This camera might not be the photographer, the commercial photographer's first choice. Yeah, and uh, I think the only person who would intentionally choose a GH5 or Panasonic also makes a G9, which is very, very similar, but maybe just a little bit more photography focused than this camera. Um, the only reason I think you would choose those cameras is because of size of lenses. So, mm -hmm. especially if you're going on like an African safari, you can get a 300 millimeter lens that's this big, and for the 5D, it's going to be this big. Sure. Uh, so that's the big advantage. Here. You might even fly under the radar if there's places you can't have professional cameras, but there's, you know, this might come off gonna, as a little more hobby or just because of the size. It's going to draw a lot less attention. Again, if you throw like a 17 millimeter prime lens on this, mm -hmm. which is going to be great for street photography. Mm -hmm. You're not going to draw as much attention as right. you would with a with a 5D or full frame. And camera. shooting 1080 on this, yeah. I remember at one point you said, eh, "Just shoot the 4K." Yeah. So, um, to me, I'm still finishing all of the projects in 1080, and I think most people are still finishing most of their projects for the corporate video world or regional yeah. local TV commercials and that sort of thing. Yeah. But, and. A lot of people want to shoot 4K so that they can zoom in and crop in. And you can get away with a little bit of that without too much quality loss. But I want to shoot 4K because it gives me a better 1080 image. And so if you shoot, start with 4K, you downsample to 1080, it looks fantastic. And some cameras do that out of the box. The Canon ones do sure. that out of the box. But this, if you shoot with 1080, the way that it's down resing the sensor you don't get anywhere near as sharp of an image hmm. as if you started with 4K and did that down res in the computer. So should anyone in the professional world then be threatened? So you, we have the red, we have all this money in the Canon line, and we have C100s and the C200 and the C300, this and that and the other. And then these come along, and I watch demo reels from aspiring filmmakers mm -hmm. that are college-aged and yeah. college students, and their work is beautiful. Yeah. There's so much, and there's a lot of talent there, too. Yeah. That, that certainly, it's not just the camera. There's a lot of young talent. But should a person that owns a production company with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gear and lights and this and that and vans and whatever be threatened by a kid with a camera on a stick? And so, why not? Yeah, or so why? Yeah, so I don't necessarily think that's the right way to look at it. Being, right. Like, it's an opportunity, and it's an opportunity for everyone in the market. So... Again, this is not going to be my first choice for shooting an interview on a tripod, but uh, it's great for this type of use, and it certainly can work as an interview on a tripod. So if Mojo Media got a shoot that was happening in Alaska, this is certainly going to be a lot easier to travel with, and sure. that might push me towards this camera for that. Um, so it's the right tool for the right job, and I think you mentioned it. It's a lot of talent there. Sure. The talent's far more important than the camera that you're using, but your job's gonna be a lot easier if you're picking the best camera for the right job. And what kind of disadvantage would you be at if this was all you had? And in, in what I'm speaking to are the corporate video production departments or a, a one person video department at a company and they have one camera or at an agency that has some 
graphic design yeah. and animation capabilities and they need to shoot some video, so they buy one of these thinking, well, now we have video capabilities. And what are you missing here? For, the, for that part of the audience yeah. that says, we're going to get into video and this is where we're starting. So by far the feature where this is lacking the most is autofocus. So the Canons and even the Sonys have fantastic autofocus. The autofocus on these doesn't work particularly well. So if you're, especially if you're trying to a smaller operation where you have a smaller crew and you might even be filming yourself sometimes, <laughs> you really need that solid autofocus and this is not bringing that to the table. Um, and then as you start adding more things to the camera, so we talked about that XLR adapter and if you need to add, build out the camera more, you wanna mount two uh, receivers, wireless receivers to it, you're gonna need a cage and you're gonna start losing that size advantage. And then again, you're gonna have a rig that you need to build up Whereas if you're shooting with a C300 or even a C100, C200, any of those, um, they have a lot of that stuff built in. So right. you're, it, it just, you're, you're building this out to be this kind of complex beast where the C200 like has all that built in. Right. Could you imagine having GH5s and this capability in college? Yeah, we had uh, big shoulder mount cameras, two thirds of an inch sensor. Uh, and I think there's three of them in the whole department. So when you rented them out, you didn't get them very this long. Is, you had to bring them back. This is quickly. what we had back when I was, yeah. We had like this. Yeah. And this was, uh, well, the lens has been in storage for years and it got a little muddy. But the lens back in the day would have been seven or eight or ten or twelve thousand dollars. And the camera body, you know, and mm -hmm. the recorder, this originally had beta cam. Yeah. And now it has the DV cam. I don't even know if it works, but we're talking thirty thousand dollars to shoot. Yeah. Four by three SD. Yeah, but and I think even on that camera. Can we gonna... put this on the June crane and try to balance it? <laughs> I don't it think just, that's going to fit. The Anton Bauer battery that went with it, it wouldn't outweighs that yeah, camera. It, absolutely. But I still think the important thing is using that camera or any camera, you're learning all the basics like aperture, shutter speed, ISO. You're learning all of that stuff. You're learning how to compose an image. I think the big advantage that the kids have today is that these are $2,000 instead of $30,000. $2,000. So they get more time behind the camera because there's a lot more of them in the department. And they have, yeah, they have 10 of them. Or, or they own them themselves. There was one of these at the University of Akron back in my day. Yeah. And it wasn't even this. It was an old, it was a, you know, with a three quarter inch yeah. recorder. Had to have that strap you, to your belt. You, you, and you could use it for a day and you had to bring it back by five to the library or the, the center that rented them out or whatever yeah. it was. Those were the days. Yeah. Any final thoughts on the GH5 overall? Uh, your advice on somebody that's considering buying one and, you know, w what is that market or yeah. who, so, who is the perfect match for this? Yeah, so this shoots 400 megabits, 422, 10-bit. It produces a really solid image and it can be graded a lot. Um, the downsides to it are that it's not great in low light. It has pretty poor autofocus and the colors need a little bit more work to look nice than the Canons do right out of the box. So um, if you need something with autofocus or you need something that's good, you know, and again, in low light, this is maybe not the camera for you, but in an environment where um, like kind of having pristine image quality in the smallest possible package, I think this is still the best option on the market, even though it's going on three years old at this point. And matching it to a, if the primary shot in an interview setting is a Canon C200 mm -hmm. or C300, and this is that cutaway angle, yeah, is that would describe a matching of the in the colors of trying to get them yeah. to look. Yeah, it's doable. You just need someone who knows a little bit about color grading. So, uh, it takes hmm. a little bit of work, but it's not too bad. All right. Well, thank you as always for coming in and educating me. And you know, most of this stuff I think I know. Yeah. But it just, just to go over it again and to get an education on it is important. And uh, thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a lot about the Panasonic GH5. We think they're great. Mm -hmm. We've got two of them now, yeah. probably more. And we can have an army of young filmmakers with cameras on sticks. But uh, we will not forget that we need the whole collection mm -hmm. in order to do a production, yeah, including absolutely. lights. Yeah. Nothing lights. wrong with bringing lights to a video shoot. Lights might be the most important thing lights you bring. Lights could be the most important thing you bring. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.